Well, praise the Lord. Here we go again. <laughs> so we we talked about the the research phase, and it's um, it's almost like not real. It's in the virtual realm. It doesn't touch the ground. I remember listening even recently to some of uh, the teachings from um, some some speakers. Um, I think they call themselves sons of God. And uh, I got this clear understanding that they are talking about the virtual world. See, the, the people got to do, like, if you look at games, they got to do such a real virtual world that you are almost feeling you're going through the grass and you smell the flowers. It's a, it's a perfect um, uh, imagination, imaginary um, world. I remember in Star Trek, I was uh, I was watching something like that where you would you'd go and actually uh, interact with that virtually created world, and they could take you in different years and in time, in the future, in the past. So. This is, you know, somehow people kind of got stuck in this research dream world without touching the ground, without having something that actually can work. And the reason they stay there is that they do not come through the stumbling block, which is stumbling stone, which is the cross the cross of Jesus. Only through the blood of Jesus, through the cross of Jesus, you can come and touch the reality. That's this matter. Otherwise, you are in this um, mystical, uh, illusionary um, dream world, as I call it. And yes, um, your soul might be very uh, joyful and um, basically negates the pain, the problem, the suffering, because it kind of lives in that um, unreal thing. I said this before, we are not to call things that are as they are not. And I think that's what's happening in uh, those type of uh, movements or speakings or preachings. And um, they create that unreal world, um, kind of a Garden of Eden that's um, in a place that's accessible through meditation, um, through imagination, you access again the Garden of Eden, but we know that without sacrifice, without death, you cannot get, <laughs> you cannot get back. We go through the death and resurrection of Christ. That's it's something fresh. I just wanted to uh, bring it to you. I, 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 I think it's going to be helpful uh, for some of you. <laughs> Some of you might say, oh, don't take that from us. That's, uh, that's where you go to sleep listening to those things. And we travel in uh, those uh, spheres uh, beyond the universe. And um, yeah, sorry to burst your bubble. Um, the substance that we are presenting is where the Spirit touches the ground through Jesus Christ and through the blood of Jesus. He became flesh. <laughs> Otherwise, He could have just kept us somewhere in our 
mind and soul of Adam and bring an imaginary salvation and relationship with God. But no, he came in the flesh, partaker of flesh and blood like the children, like us. Okay. <laughs> this is also real. <laughs> also real. Okay, good. I'm, I'm smiling because um, I, I feel some burst bubbles and people listening and it's like, well, why do we have to go against this teaching and against that teaching? And um, I'm, just, I'm just sharing to you the truth as I know it in here. Okay? You are to discern. You're born of the truth so you can discern the truth. And that's on you. <laughs> okay, good. So, we move from that research place in the phase that I call it the development. So now you actually work with things on the ground. But it's the sandbox. So almost like everything kind of goes. It seems like there are no rules. No, it might be a car accident, uh, uh, might be a miraculous healing, might be a prayer answer that gets somebody out of death. And it's like, man, it's like, doesn't seem to follow a certain rule. What, what is going on? <laughs> I tell you. So Genesis 37. Now he here is the the sandbox for Joseph, right? His brothers went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said to Joseph, Are not your brothers feeding the flock in Shechem? Come, I will send you to them. So he said to him, Here I am. Then he said to him, Please go and see if it is well with your brothers and well with the flocks and bring back word to me. I like that here I am from Joseph. So he, um, you know, Jacob, Israel, sent him, Joseph, out of the valley of Hebron, and he went to Shechem. Now a certain man found him, and there he was, wandering in the field. And the man asked him, saying, What are you seeking? So he said, I'm seeking my brothers. Please tell me where they are feeding their flocks. And the man said, Oh, they have departed from here. For I heard them saying, Let us go to Dothan. So Joseph went after his brothers, found them in Dothan. Now when they saw him afar off, even before he came near them, they conspired against him to kill him. Then they said to one another, Look, this dreamer is coming. So, yeah, phase two, the development, everything kind of seems random, out of control, playing a sandbox. <laughs> so, w what's happening? Is, is God just playing with Joseph's life? There are so many forces around. Um, of course, the enemy, the devil is there. Uh, people's carnal nature is there. Um, the man that comes from nowhere and finds Joseph and says, No, I heard them talking this way. I mean, if that man was not there, he would have never made it to the brothers. It's the middle of nowhere. So neutral, you know, people deciding to take a walk and just run into Joseph. So many forces around moving and different things. So it's almost like the Lord is allowing kind of a free flow. It's like every force kind of does its own thing. People think to kill him and 
but somehow he is in a place watching everything, almost like a director of a movie. <laughs> That's how I imagine that knows the script, knows the end of the movie, but creates this scenario so real. So, uh, <laughs> at, at one point, when you look at what the scenario is, it's almost impossible to guess the end, especially when you are in the movie. <laughs> So if the script that's given to you is chapter by chapter, you never read the, the last chapter. So you don't quite know what's coming. So you're just completely immersed into what is this? And these people in the family saying this and the Lord is quiet and all this and this and what's happening here. Okay. So, <laughs> when you are in this type of season, <laughs> of course, you have to be somehow uh, the best thing or the best word that can come to you or somebody that talks to you has to kind of have you take a step back or go higher up so you can start seeing the larger picture but usually if you are in this kind of a mess of all this thing and somebody says the Lord loves you it's okay everything is gonna turn out okay uh, you call it positive thinking <laughs> or, a, or a wrong prophecy <laughs> you don't know how to deal with that and if, if that person is a trustworthy person it comes and kind of encourages you, you go and you take him on the side and says, you have no idea how hard it is. I don't know if you've been through this. All I wanted is Jesus. All I wanted is to serve him. All I wanted is my family to know the Lord. All I wanted is... Yeah. Look what happens all around. Nothing makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I know those places. <laughs> Absolutely love those places. So it's, he finds, Joseph goes, finds his brothers in Dothan. And I looked in, uh, in the translation from Hebrew and it means the two wells. No, the, the wells for water, two wells. Like you can drink either from one or from another. They are both wells and they are both real. It's almost like your life is going um, in two directions simultaneously. <laughs> Two realms that are real, all the same. This is the sandbox. So, if you are there, yeah, I, I wish I could tell you, uh, learn to enjoy the time, because... Um, it's, it's like you are split between what's on outside, what's on the inside. The inside is real because the Word of God. The outside is real because it hits you in the face. <laughs> How can it not be? <laughs> Different direction, two wells to drink water from. Um, but, you know... Remember the words, remember the dreams. Hey, Joseph, <laughs> remember the dreams. The one that gave you the dreams, it sees you through this on the other side. That's why he gave you the dreams. Call things that are not as 
they were. Because of those words, because of those dreams. And get in touch with the spirit of counsel. Oh, spirit of counsel answers hard questions and it sees purpose, destiny. Why we go through this? What's the direction? Where we're gonna get to? Spirit of counsel. So get in touch and if, if, if someone is coming, any other uh, minister, uh, son with the spirit of counsel, just listen, just rest and listen. Um, do not fight it. <laughs> I mean, poor Joseph, uh, he had no chance. He was in the sandbox of God. He had to trust God to make sense of all this almost unreal what's going on and um, your father knows it it's just a phase and you'll go through it